me. This bunk bed is made from supplies that you can get in one trip to one of your home centers. What I got here is 23 2x6s and 3 1x6s. The 1x6 will be used for the slats for the railing and the headboards, and the rest of the bunk is made entirely from these 2x6s. Now you can choose to leave this lumber exactly as is and make the bunk bed right from here, but I am going to plane this stuff down to take away a little bit of the thickness just so the bunk bed doesn't look so boxy. So we got a lot of jointing and planing ahead of us. Whether or not you choose to plane down your lumber, you need to make sure part F is cut off of these four two by sixes before you get started because it's a little bit longer than the rest of the remaining two by six. And this part F is the mattress support rail. The slats go across to hold the mattress and this is what holds it on. And it's the full one and a half inches of a two by six. So let's go ahead and cut that off on the table saw before we start planing all of this down to one and a quarter inches of thickness. To download plans for this bunk bed, follow the link in the description below. Once you have parts E and F cut to length, it's time to chop, joint, plane, all those other pieces to one and a quarter thick and their appropriate lengths. To make the four leg assemblies, you need to take parts E and C, put pocket holes in part E, and then join together with two inch pocket hole screws. Parts D and G, which make up the bed frame, there are two of these, are joined together with pocket screws and wood glue from this side. Supports the slats that hold the mattress in place. 
We already have parts G cut out for the four head and foot boards. We have B cut to length and width, but we need to route this profile in. And we need to do this for part B and part A, and this makes the side rail. To make the four head and foot boards, you need to take a bunch of part K and drill pocket holes in both sides, part G and part B, and join them all together with one and a quarter inch screws and wood glue. To make the railing, you need part L, part J, and part A, and join them together using wood glue, nails from the bottom, and one and a quarter inch pocket screws on the one side only. The first day I was drilling pocket holes, I remembered that for the railing, I only need pocket holes in one side of the board because I'm gonna be nailing from the bottom. And when I went back and routed everything, I realized, oh, I missed some holes on one side of these boards. So, Doing my due diligence, I went in and drilled the pocket holes on the other side. And as I'm putting it together today, I'm plugging those holes because I want to make sure that I have enough mass for the nail or screw from the bottom to bite onto. Assemble the ladder using part I and part H wood glue and two inch pocket screws from the bottom of the ladder.
I'm not seeing any small, but yeah, so what I don't know is there is in the little things I've seen, there's a cube that's on. I've got the 300 cubes on the floor, can't you? Oh, it's easy. These are already like a level. Mm -hmm. It took my wife and I about three and a half hours to stain everything last night. So I estimate I have about 12 straight hours of polyurethane brushing on these things. Uh, how about no? Let's spray. Well, there you go, guys. A beautiful bunk bed that you can make for under $200. We spent less than $200, and that's including the finish, the stain, all, all that good stuff. I'm actually super happy with how this bunk bed turned out. I think the top bunk is a little bit high, but my wife likes it because she can sit on the bottom bunk sitting up now comfortably and read stories to the kids. So if she's happy, I'm definitely happy.